Hello and welcome to our nutrition math lecture. Yay, math! I'm sure you guys are very excited because uh, everyone loves math. Um, so where we ended off last when we were talking about um, looking at um, pet food bags and reading the labels, the last thing we talked about was the guaranteed analysis. So the guaranteed analysis looks something like this. We'll see um, protein, uh, whoops, I spelled protein wrong, um, listed as a percentage. Uh, protein is listed as a minimum to remind you. So that means that the lowest amount of protein in that food is going to be 26% in this example. Um, it doesn't give you a maximum. It could be 100%. It does not say. It just guarantees a minimum. Uh, we'll see fat listed as a minimum percentage. So 14%. We'll see the fiber that's listed as a maximum. So minimum for fat, maximum for fiber. So the most fiber in this example is 5%. And um, then moisture. Uh, so in this example, 10%. Uh, and moisture is a maximum as well. So it might be a little bit drier, but the maximum amount it'll be is 10%. Um, often we'll also have ash listed. Remember, ash is our mineral content. Um, this is listed as a maximum as well. Um, oh, I didn't bother including ash in my example, so I'm just gonna scratch that out. Um, ash. So you might be asking yourself, why, is, why are minerals called ash? Uh, so ash is basically everything that's left after we burn the food. So minerals are going to stick around as ash, whereas everything else is going to be combusted up. Uh, so that's why uh, minerals are often called ash on the guaranteed analysis. So I have my cat's cat food right here to show you on the bag. You're going to find guaranteed analysis. So on this example, uh, the proteins minimum is 31%. Minimum fat content is 14%. Crude fiber is 5.6 and moisture is 8%. So that's a guaranteed analysis on this dry food. So if we look at this food here, we've got a guaranteed analysis as well. Um, it's right here, guaranteed analysis. So crude protein on this one is 11%. Oh wow, that seems way lower than 31% on the dry food. Crude fat, 4%. Hmm, that seems really low too. Uh, crude fiber, 1%. Okay, that, all those numbers seem way lower, hey, than our, uh, than our dry food there. But moisture, oh my goodness, does that say 78%? So, how the heck are we supposed to compare these two foods um, when the guaranteed analysis is so wildly different? Can we really say, if we're looking for, well, which diet is better for cats? Um, well, we want to see higher protein in a cat diet, right? So can we really just say, oh, well, that dry food has more protein. It's third or yeah, what was it? 31% on the dry food whereas versus 11% on the can. Well, not really. Cause what do we know about canned foods? They tend to be actual meat in there, right? There's a lot more meat. Um, so we kind of have to ask ourselves, what does the guaranteed analysis tell us? And the answer is not a heck of a lot. Uh, the problem with the guaranteed analysis is that it is giving you information on an as-fed basis. So that means it includes all that moisture, that 78% moisture in the canned food, or the 10% or 8% I think it was on this bag um, in the dry food. So what we want to do is compare these two diets using a typical analysis, not as-fed. So the typical analysis is going to basically remove the water from the equation. Um, and then we're going to end up with a dry matter basis. So we're going to talk first about how to do dry matter calculations. So <clears throat> that is this first part here um, in our nutrition formulas. So dry matter calculation, we are going to, very first step is to remove the amount of moisture from our um, equations here so that we only have the dry matter basis, right? So the bag's dry matter, DM, 
is meaning dry matter. And then you'll see we have dry matter B, that's of the bag or of the can. We have DMP, dry matter of the protein. DMF, dry matter of the fat. DMFB, dry matter of the fiber. If there is ash included, DMA, A is for ash, okay? So let's calculate for the bag. So this is my example piece right here, okay? Um, so when I looked at the guaranteed analysis chart or list on the, on the bag, it said there's 26% protein, 14% fat, 5% fiber, and 10% moisture. So I'm gonna follow this first formula. I'm going to figure out the dry matter of the bag. It's equal to 100% because that's the overall bag amount is 100%. And we're gonna subtract the moisture percentage on the bag, which is 10%, so 100 minus 10%. So that is equal to, I don't even need a calculator for this one, 90%, okay? So 90% is now our DMB. And you're gonna see that DMB shows up in every other calculation. Oh, whoops, this is supposed to be DMB. I'll have to correct that in your sheet, not DMA, okay? Uh, so now we know our dry matter basis, we're looking at 90%. So next I can calculate what the protein is. So um, DMP, dry matter of protein, is equal to the percent protein on the bag, which is 26%. So I'm gonna go 26% and I'm gonna divide that by 90% because DMB, that's our DMB. And then we can multiply that by 100. So this I do need my calculator for, so I'm gonna go 26 divided by 90 equals 0 0.2888888. So let's talk about rounding up here. When we have a number like this, we're gonna need to round because I'm not gonna report, uh, how many digits is this, seven digits? I'm not gonna report that. I would like to report uh, similar to what this one is. So this one is in um, whole numbers here, so we can do a bit of rounding. Oh, um, and then let's multiply that by 100. So just to reiterate, I'm going 26 divided by 90 times 100. So I end, oops, 26 divided by 90 times 100. So I have 28.8888888. So I'd like to report it similarly to this. Um, so I can just report it as um, 29, or I could go with a decimal point and go 28.9. So uh, I'll maybe use the decimal point, just because I, I like a decimal point here. So I'm gonna go 28.9%. So when we're looking at rounding, whatever digit we wanna round to, so I would like to round to the one decimal point. I'm going to look at the, the um, number previous to that. It's an eight. Eight is a greater than five, so I'm gonna round this up to the next number, which is nine. If this number was below five, I would round it down, or i.e. leave it the same. So if this was 28.844444, I would make it 28.8, .8 because this number is lower than five in that case, okay? So my dry matter of protein then is 28.9. Huh, so that actually looks a little bit higher then of than the 26, right? When once we've removed that moisture. So let's move on to calculating the fat. So I'm gonna move down to my next um, formula. <coughs> so DM of F, so dry matter of fat. So we're going to look at the fat percentage on the bag. Right here, 14%. And then I can divide that by the dry matter of the bag, which is right here, which we calculated in the first step. So that's 90%. And then we can multiply that by 100. So let's do that with our handy dandy calculator. 14 divided by 90 times 100. So that gives us 15.55555. So if I wanna do one decimal place, I'm gonna look at this number, it's a five. I'll look at the number beside it. It is also a five. Five or greater, I'm going to round this number up to a six, so 15.6%. So again, that's gone up a bit, right? Because we've taken out the uh, water from our equation, so that gives us with 15.6%. 
We have a dry matter of fiber, FB. So that's our next uh, formula here. Dry matter of fiber is equal to the fiber percentage on the bag. That is 5%. We can divide that by DMB, dry matter of the bag, which is 90%. And then we can multiply that by 100. Are we seeing a pattern here? So we'll take our calculator, 5 divided by 90 times 100. So 5.55555. So again, I'll round to one decimal place. So we'll look at the number beside it. If it's 5 or above, I'll round it up to 5.6. So 5.6% is my uh, fiber calculation. Um, we don't have ash in this example, so we don't need to calculate ash. So now I've calculated the dry matter basis for, um, for uh, this specific food. Now, you might have noticed when we talk about the energy uh, producing nutrients, we have protein, we have fat, and we have one other item. Um, do you remember what it is? It is carbohydrates. So um, typically, if you're doing a dry matter calculation, you're also going to want to figure out what the um, carbohydrates are. So that is our next step here. We want to find out what the percentage of carbohydrates is in this diet. So CHO percent means carbohydrate percentage. So the total diet accounts for 100%. So everything in the food is 100%. And then we're going to subtract out the DMP. So that's the dry matter of protein. So that's 28.9. Um, we're also going to uh, remove the fat on the dry matter basis. So DMF is, uh, sorry, 15.6. And we need to remove the fiber. So FB is 5.6. And I didn't have ash in this example, but if I did, I would remove that as well. So we can add all this up, right? If, do you guys remember from math, we talk about bed mass, right? So that's brackets, exponents, um, divide, multiply, it's hard to write sideways, um, and then add and subtract. So that's our order of operations, right? So brackets B, we want to start with the brackets here. So we'll add all that up first. So 28.9, whoopsie, 28.9 plus 15.6 plus 5.6 gives us 50. 0.1% inside that bracket. We can carry down the rest of the, the uh, equation. <coughs> so we have 100 minus 50.1. So 100 minus 50.1, and that gives us 49.9%. .9 so this diet is 0.1% less than half, um, half the diet is carbs. Okay, so that gives us um, a better look at what is actually in that food, okay? So um, if we needed to do a comparison now of food, um, we would be able to calculate the dry matter basis for two different diets and we could do um, a comparison. So let's say this is obviously a dry food, right? If you guys remember talking about dry foods, typically they have a maximum amount of moisture of 10%. Um, and uh, canned foods can be, uh, um, I think, up to 80%, if I remember correctly, 78 or 80. This one is 78. So let's calculate the dry matter basis on this can. So this is just a can of Frisky's Pate, ocean white fish and tuna. How lovely. Um, so our uh, guaranteed analysis on this one, GA, is um, protein... 11%, fat, 4%, fiber, 
1% is ash in here. Yes, ash is in here. It's 3.5%. And you'll notice in this one, taurine is listed as well. Why would taurine be listed on a cat food? So if you remember, taurine is an essential nutrient for cats. Uh, so often it is reported in the guaranteed analysis. It is not mandatory for it to be there, but often companies will report it just to make it abundantly clear that there is taurine um, in this food. So I honestly don't bother adding the taurine in when I'm doing the calculation for carbohydrates because it's just typically so negligible and uh, it would be included in the protein as well. So ash, three and a half percent, and then moisture here we'll see is 78%. Okay, so that is our guaranteed analysis of the canned food. So let's do our dry matter basis. So let's find the dry matter of the bag first. So DMB. So that's going to be 100% minus the moisture in the can. So 78%. And that's going to give us, I'll do the math on this one, 22%. So this is my DMB that's going to get plugged into every other line in my dry matter calculation equations. So dry matter protein. Uh, here is a 11%, um, so I can go 11% uh, divided by 22% times 100, and that is going to be equal, let's see, 11 divided by 22 times 100. So, oh wow, 50%. See how much that jumps? Guaranteed analysis includes water, so it includes that moisture. So 11% is on my label, it's 50% after I remove that, um, that moisture. So dry matter of fat, here it is 4% divided by 22% times 100. Let's see what that gives us. Four divided by 22 times 100. Oh wow, now we have 18.18181. So if I want to round to the nearest uh, single decimal place here, um, I'm going to look at the number beside it. Is it five or greater? Yes, eight is more than five. We can round this up to a two. So 18.2%. So again, 4% to 18.2, that's a big jump. Dry matter of fiber, <clears throat> fiber is 1% on the guaranteed analysis. We'll divide that by the 22% of the dry matter in the bag. One divided by 22 times 100. I just wanna do that one more time. One divided by 22 times 100. Okay, I thought maybe I hit the wrong button. So, okay, so here's one where we're not gonna round up. So I have 4.54545. Um, so I can look at this number here and it is a four. Um, so I can leave this number the same at 4.5. And then uh, dry matter of ash. We do have ash reported on this can. Um, so ash is 3.5%. Well, I keep putting the brackets there, but I don't mean to. Okay, you know what? I brought white out for this exact reason because I think it gets confusing when you have scribbles, scribbles everywhere. Uh, so divided by 22% times 100. 3.5 divided by 22 times 100. That gives us... Wait, did I do that right? Jeez. I guess so. It just seemed really high. 15 point, let's see, 9. If I look at the one next to it, 0, is that less than 5? Yes, so I can just leave that at 15.9%. Uh, okay, so I've done all my dry matter calculations. I would like to calculate my carbohydrates now too, so I can compare those as well. So carbohydrates is 100% minus all of these numbers, so 50 
plus 18.2 plus 4.5 plus 15.9. So let's add those guys up. 50 plus 18.2 plus 4.5 plus 15.9. So that gives us 88.6. Um, so 100 minus 88.6. So carbohydrates is 11.4%. So if we're going to compare these two, this canned diet and this dry diet, so this one's the dry, this one's the can. If I'm going to compare these two and I'm going to ask myself the question, which diet is better for cats? So cats, we typically want to see um, a higher amount of protein and we wanna see a lower amount of carbs. So if I compare these two diets, I can compare on the dry matter basis. So I only care about my calculated numbers. I don't really care about these, right? Um, so if I look at these, if I look at the guaranteed analysis and try to pick a food this way, I'm never gonna pick the correct food. Cause look, protein here for the dry food is 26%. Protein here for the um, canned food is 11%. So if I look at guaranteed analysis and I tell you to pick the one with the higher protein, you're going to pick the dry food. But when you look at the, when you remove the moisture from the diet and look at the actual dry matter percentage, you can see that the protein here is 28.9% and the protein here is 50%. So which diet is better for cats in terms of protein? The can diet at 50%. Um, the other thing we want to look at for cats is a lower amount of carbs, right? So this diet, this dry diet, half the diet is carbs, almost 50%. How much carbs is in the can? 11.4. So again, if you were to look at these to compare, um, oh, actually we didn't calculate the guaranteed analysis percentage, but it would be significantly different than this. Um, you wouldn't get the accurate information, but looking at this uh, dry matter basis, you'll see that carbs are much lower in the canned diet. So the thing that we want to select then would be the canned diet. It's going to be better for cats. Now, if we were looking for a diet that's better for seniors, there's three parameters we would like to look at. We'd like to see a lower level of fat. We'd like to see a higher level of protein and we'd like to see a higher amount of fiber. So we can compare these two diets again on that, um, on that dry matter basis. If we look at the as-fed, the guaranteed analysis, protein 26, protein 11, fat 14, fat four, fiber five, fiber one, everything's higher on this end than this end. But if we compare the dry matter, we'll see that protein is higher in the canned food Fat is lower in the dry food, and fiber is, let's see, fiber is slightly higher in the um, dry food as well. So, I mean, this isn't a senior diet, so maybe this isn't the best comparison example. Um, like, if this was on a test or a worksheet, I'd make the answers really clear to you about which one's going to be better. Um, but typically, you're going to want that more protein. I'd probably opt for the canned food for my senior pet. Okay. So that is why we would do a dry matter calculation um, so that we can compare two diets. Uh, so I'm sure you remember from yesterday that uh, looking at labels doesn't necessarily give us a ton of information when it comes to what is in a pet food. So um, we need to do this extra step of doing the math to be able to compare two foods. Now I ask you, how many owners do you think know that? Probably like none. So if the doctor gives an instruction to a client to make sure they pick a food that has um, a higher amount of protein and they're at the store and they're looking at two bags and they're comparing, they're probably going to end up picking the one that's higher protein based on the guaranteed analysis. But you can see that the guaranteed analysis gives you very different results when you do the dry matter calculation, okay? So we're not really serving our clients very well if we instruct them to go to a pet store and compare labels for like protein percentage or carbohydrate percentage, because that's not going to give them enough information. 
what we should be doing is making a food recommendation in the clinic. So ideally, your clinic sells a food that you guys feel good about, that you can stand behind and say, we, um, we've seen good results with this food and we like to sell it, we like to see that our animals have it, um, that they're eating it. So ideally, we wanna make an actual recommendation. I recommend feeding adult food to your adult pet. We have it up front, how about you grab a bag on your way out? Okay, so telling owners to compare um, guaranteed analysis isn't going to give them even remotely enough information. Okay, so um, I'll maybe stop here um, because that I've given you our dry matter calculations. So what I'm going to tell you to do now is to work on the dry matter calculations in the worksheet. So um, I have quite a number of them for you to practice with. So you can go through those and work on those until you start to feel comfortable with those. And then you can move on to um, the next math, which is going to be uh, figuring out um, price comparisons. Okay, thank you.